Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yish Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 26th of November. Police use water cannons, tear gas shells to disperse protesting farmers in India. Protests continue in Gilgit Baltistan against rigged elections. And Indian Foreign Secretary meets Nepal's top leadership to boost ties. And now for all the details. Security forces in northern India fired water cannons and used tear gas on protesting farmers on Thursday during a protest to condemn Prime Minister Narendra Modi's new farm legislation. Farmers have given a call for protest march to capital New Delhi to coincide with the Constitution Day celebrations against three new farm laws. Ten central trade unions also observed a nationwide general strike to protest against various policies of the central government. Thousands of farmers from several North Indian states, particularly Punjab and Haryana on Thursday, began moving towards capital New Delhi as part of the Dilli Chalo protest called for November 26 and 27. Police used water cannons and tear gas shells to disperse protesting farmers as they tried to break through police barricades at Sadopur border in Ambala. Protesters also pushed police barricades over the edge of a bridge. Farmers have given a call for Dilli Chalo protest march to coincide with the Constitution Day celebrations against new farm laws. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government has defended the bills approved by the parliament in September as reform measures that will help rid India's vast agriculture sector of antiquated laws and allow farmers to sell to institutional buyers and big retailers. Protesters fear that this could lead to the government not buying produce at guaranteed prices, thereby disrupting their timely payments. I want to say that the government is ready for the government to be prepared for the Meanwhile, security has also been heightened at the Delhi's borders with Gurugram and Faridabad to stop the farmers from entering into the national capital. Drone cameras have also been deployed at Delhi borders for security surveillance. India on Thursday paid homage to the victims of 26-11 Mumbai ter attacks on its 12th anniversary. Prime Minister Narendra Modi said India cannot forget the wounds of 26-11 perpetrated by attackers from Pakistan and the countries fighting terrorism with new policies. India on Thursday remembered the victims of deadly 26-11 Mumbai attacks on its 12th anniversary. Maharashtra State Governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari, Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre and several other dignitaries paid homage to all those who lost their lives in the terror attacks at the police memorial in Mumbai. At least 166 persons, including six Americans, were killed in the 2008 Mumbai attacks by 10 gunmen who went on a rampage around various city landmarks for almost three days. India blames the gunmen were linked to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror group. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also paid tributes to the victims during an event on Thursday and said that India cannot forget the wounds of the 26-11 Mumbai attacks perpetrated by attackers from Pakistan. मुंबई हमले के जख्म भारत भूल नहीं सकता अब आज का भारत नई नीति नई रीति के साथ आतंकवाद का मुकाबला कर रहा है मीनवाइल द इंडियन डायस्पोरा इन द यूएस हेल्ड अ मेमोरियल गैदरिंग आउटसाइड द कैपिटल हिल फॉर द विक्टिम्स ऑफ द 26 11 मुंबई टेरर अटैक्स ऑन द ओकेजन 
They displayed anti-Pakistan banners and demanded justice, saying that 12 years have passed on and Pakistan is yet to take any action on those who orchestrated the attack. Severe cyclonic storm Nivar made landfall near India's Puducherry city in the early hours of Thursday, bringing heavy rains to the Union territory and neighbouring Tamil Nadu state. A severe cyclone slammed into India's southern coast early on Thursday, uprooting trees, power lines and killing at least five people in and around Chennai city of Tamil Nadu state. According to the Indian Meteorological Department or IMD, Cyclone Nivar made landfall near Puducherry city, located near the southern state of Tamil Nadu, with winds of up to 81 miles per hour. IMD informed Nivar's intensity had dropped to 53 to 59 miles per hour till the last reports came in and it was expected to weaken further. The severe cyclonic storm Nivar now lays over Thiruvannamalai districts at a distance of 50 km from Puducherry. It is likely to move northwestwards and weakens into cyclonic storm in a couple of hours. Meanwhile, India's Interior Minister Amit Shah spoke to Chief Ministers of Tamil Nadu and Puducherry and assured them of all possible help from the centre in the wake of the severe cyclonic storm. He informed NDRF teams are already on ground to help those in need. Fishermen were still advised by IMD not to venture into southwest and adjoining west central Bay of Bengal along an off Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and South Andhra Pradesh coast till Thursday night. Moving on, locals and opposition political parties have continued to hold protests in Gilgit, Baltistan against Prime Minister Imran Khan-led Pakistan government blaming that the recently held assembly elections in the illegally occupied region were rigged. People across Gilgit, Baltistan have continued to hold protests against Prime Minister Imran Khan-led Pakistan government alleging recently held assembly elections in the illegally occupied region were rigged. The protesters burned tires and blocked the roads on Wednesday to express anger and frustration, blaming irregularities in the poll process and accused the government of the blatant misuse of power. Imran Khan's party Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf or PTI has won a majority of the 23 assembly seats and is poised to form the government in Gilgit, Baltistan. This year's elections were of uncommon importance and desperation for Islamabad, as activists have blamed Pakistan's all-weather friend China wants it to gain complete political control over the illegally occupied region for its strategic and ambitious China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC. Under its growing pressure and demands only, Khan in the run-up to the polls had declared the status of a provisional province to Gilgit, Baltistan. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan presidential palace has rejected any progress in peace negotiations with the Taliban and said the deadlock in talks has not broken so far. This comes as local media reports this week informed a breakthrough in negotiations in Doha. The Afghan presidential palace has rejected any progress in peace negotiations between negotiators of the government and the Taliban and said that the deadlock in the talks has not broken so far. Local media reports this week informed a breakthrough in the talks and said both sides have agreed to include the U.S.-Taliban agreement, U.N. endorsements for the Afghan peace process, commitments of the negotiating teams and the will of the Afghan people as the base for upcoming negotiations. But presidential spokesman Sadiq Siddiqui on Wednesday said that the Taliban's demand is against the constitution. However, he did not provide details in this regard. Siddiqui asserted peace is a priority for Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and that the Taliban should join the peace process as it is supported by the international community. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Former Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sirisena, while testifying before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing Easter Sunday attacks on Tuesday and Wednesday, continued to deny responsibility for the attacks. However, he was of the view that it would not be unfair to take legal action against him if he is found guilty in any investigation. 
former Sri Lankan President Maitripala Sirisena while testifying before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry probing Easter Sunday attacks on Tuesday and Wednesday, continued to insist that although all members of the security and intelligence services were responsible for preventing the attack, he had no responsibility as president. He was, however, of the view that it would not be unfair to take legal action against him if he is found guilty in an investigation into the last year's terrorist attack. Sri Lanka was rocked by a series of deadly blasts on April 21, 2019. The local Islamic extremist group National Tawhid Jamaat carried out a series of blasts that tore through three churches and as many luxury hotels in the island nation, killing 258 people. The previous government headed by Sirisena and then Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe was blamed for its inability to prevent the attacks despite the prior intelligence made available on the impending attack. In news from Nepal, Indian Foreign Secretary Harshwadhan Shringla on Thursday arrived in Nepal on a two-day official visit largely aimed at resettling bilateral ties that came under severe strain following a bitter border row between the two countries. Shringla began his visit with a meeting with his Nepalese counterpart Bharat Paudal, during which the two sides took stock of overall bilateral cooperation. He also met Nepal's Foreign Minister Pradeep Kumar Gyavali and handed over COVID-19 related medical assistance. Shringla was also scheduled to call on Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and President Bidya Devi Bhandari later in the day. Devotees gathered on the banks of River Ganga in northern India to bathe in the river, perform rituals and pray for the well-being of their families as they marked the auspicious day of Tulsi Viva. With this ritual, the auspicious Hindu marriage season begins in India. Devout Hindus in India's northern Varanasi city offered prayers and took holy dips on Wednesday as they marked the auspicious day of Tulsi Vivaha. On this day, the ritual of marrying Tulsi plant, which is holy to the Hindus, to Shaligram, a symbolic form of Hindu god Sri Krishna, is performed. Devotees perform the ritual to pay ode to the sacred plant, which is believed to be an incarnation of Goddess Lakshmi. Devotees with much adoration gathered on the banks of River Ganga early in the day on Wednesday to bathe in the river, perform rituals and pray for the well-being of their families. यहाँ पे लोग बहुत दूर-दूर से दर्शन करने आते हैं गंगाजी में स्नान करते हैं और आज एकादशी का दिन है तो आज के दिन क्या होता है कि तुलसी विवाह होता है और जो लोग होते हैं यहाँ पे नहाते हैं यहाँ पे दान पुण्य का कार्य करते हैं और अपने घर पे जाकर के तुलसी विवाह करते हैं। With this ritual, the auspicious Hindu marriage season begins in India. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Police use water cannons, tear gas shells to disperse protesting farmers in India. Protests continue in Gilgit Baltistan against rigged elections. And Indian Foreign Secretary meets Nepal's top leadership to boost ties. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.